Hello and welcome to the Car Care on Channel. Welcome back to another video in my series on how Toyota hybrids work. Remember, we're keeping this simple, but it's actually very complicated. So in today's video, we're going to be talking about, we're going to be focusing on the B mode in the shifter. You guys have asked about this in the comments. And we're also going to touch base briefly on all-wheel drive since I missed that on the transmission. But before we get started, if you're new to the channel, welcome, consider subscribing to the channel, check out some of my other videos. If you are a returning subscriber, thank you so much for watching another one of my videos. And without further ado, let's dig right into this. So the B mode, most people see it on the shifter. Some people don't even notice it, never really know about it, never really use it, but we're going to talk about it today. So the B mode, most people will open their owner's manual, they read about it, it's engine braking and all this fancy little stuff. Let me elaborate on that a little bit, a little bit of an overview before we dig into how it actually works and what happens. So in your conventional gasoline car, automatic transmission you have park reverse neutral drive and usually you have two three four or you have sport shift manual shift tiptronic whatever you want to call it so the idea of those other shifts are let's say you're driving in a mountainous area you're going down a hill if you keep slamming on your brake you're eventually going to overheat your brakes brakes will fade now you have no brakes so you downshift the transmission to hold a, a lower, a higher gear, sorry, a lower gear. So the engine would do some of the braking. Now, when that happens, the engine is just being spun up and down. The engine is like a big air pump. Every time you compress that air, it's creating a drag. That's just a normal thing with gasoline engines. However, when they made hybrids, that was not possible initially because the engine doesn't run all the time and the engine is not connected directly through the transmission to the to the road remember we talked about this it could be or it could not be connected so to resolve this issue here's what the engineers came up with you put it in b and if you own a hybrid drive a hybrid you probably have tried it and as soon as you put it in b and you let go of the gas, the engine revs up and the car just hunkles down and it seems like uh, it's doing a lot of things. It actually works even better than some gasoline models. Let's talk about what actually happens because this is one of the most misunderstood and a huge misconception and I partly put that on Toyota, slightly, small rant. So Toyota has been excellent on their technical training. They give you all the information, they explain everything. It's very technical information, but usually it's meant for professionals and meant for either technicians, engineering department, R&D. It's not really meant for average Joe to read it, but they are usually very detailed, very excellent. Except the B mode. There is so little information out there on B mode in technical writing that is really difficult to get information on. And this is what delayed this video. I had to do significant research and make calls and inquire and ask to get some information on it because it seems like it's just there. We never talked about it. There is that. So you all just gonna have to figure it out. Since there is really no physical parts to make this system happen, it's merely a programming thing. That's why there's not a lot of details because from a diagnosis standpoint, there's going to be a lot wrong before the B mode doesn't work. So the B mode, two things happen when you put your shifter in B mode. First one is the regenerative braking goes to maximum, maximum possible or allowed. So every time you lift off the gas pedal, it will apply full regener regenerative braking. So that's why you get that shift forward because now the car is slowing down. Remember, regenerative braking is gradual. It could vary up and down. 
So when you press your brake, remember we talked about this in the previous video, when you press your brake a little bit, it'll apply them a little bit, it'll start using MG2, we talked about it in the previous video, to, re to recuperate that force from the road, to charge the battery, you press it more, it's gonna use it more and more. In B mode, it's gonna use it 100% possible. It's gonna apply it fully. And this is where all the problems happen because everybody might know this, but here's what the misconception, and this is what I want you to pay attention to and never, never make this mistake. People say, wait a minute, if it's applying MG2 all the way and we're going, we're going to town with charging the battery, that's a great way to, I'm always gonna put it in B and charge my battery very quickly because it's going to town with the charging. That's not the case because there is a small missing part to this happy party that breaks it down and everything doesn't go to town and it really becomes counterproductive. That is not enough to slow this car down at the same rate. A normal gasoline car would slow down going down a hill when you put it, when you force the transmission manually into a lower gear. So here's what they had to do. Remember we talked briefly about the engine being an air pump. So when you have the engine spinning, you're spinning the engine by the force of the road, it's gonna create a drag. Remember the piston is going up, valves are closed, it has resistance trying to compress that air. That's the air pump effect. So that's resistance. If you've ever spun an engine by hand when it's off, you're gonna notice it spins lightly, then it gets tight, then it spins and it gets tight. That's the whole idea. But the problem is, in hybrids, the engine goes through the planetary gear set. It's not directly connected to the road. Unlike a conventional gasoline engine where the engine is connected to the torque converter, to the transmission, that's a direct connection to the road, basically. But in hybrids, that's not the case. So there is not enough force to spin that engine freely up to create that drag. So here is what the hybrid system does. And this is, ladies and gentlemen, this is brilliant. This is engineering at its finest. It's gonna physically turn the engine with the force of MG1, turn it up, rev it up, and that's what creates the drag. It's actually basically gonna downshift this, the CVT mechanism, if you would, backwards at a lower ratio. But in order to achieve that, it needs the engine to rev up. So it's gonna apply power to MG1 to start turning the engine. So actually, when you hear that engine all of a sudden rev up in B mode, the engine is not running. It is not, there's no fuel going through it, there's no spark, there's no ignition, there's nothing. It's just being spun up by MG1. Pretty cool. Somebody has asked a wonderful question. Well, when it revs that engine up, isn't that gonna harm the, the gasoline engine, if you would? I mean, it's not running, it's just being spun up really rapidly. Actually, no. Hybrids, the gasoline part of the hybrid engine has a mechanical oil pump. So that oil pump, when the engine spins, the oil pump spins, so there's oil delivery. If the, if the water pump is, this is an older hybrid, if the water pump is mechanical, it's also gonna start spinning. If the water pump is electric, it's gonna control everything. Actually, there's no heat generation at this point. There's very little heat generation from friction. There's no ignition. There's no exhaust really coming out. The exhaust is coming out from the flow of the piston, but nothing is happening. The engine is just free flowing. Oil is going around like it should at that dedicated RPM. There's no wear, there's no problems. It's the same as if the engine is running, except it's being spun by the motor. So here is the other problem here. It's counterproductive. Yes, we are applying full regenerative braking and really, really recharging that battery, but we're also really over revving MG1, not over revving, but high, re high torque MG1 to spin that engine at high RPM to create that drag. So 
we're generating more, we're also consuming a lot more. So in the end, this becomes inefficient. You can't generate more than you're consuming at, at the same speed. There is just the laws of physics don't allow it. So actually in B mode, the hybrid system becomes inefficient. And, and that's what I want you guys to get from this. Do not mistake B mode for charge mode, if you would. That's not the case. You don't put the car in B mode and assume, oh, the engine is running, revving high, the regenerative braking is high, so I'm gonna charge my battery very quick. It's actually quite the opposite. You're gonna consume more. Even though you're generating more, remember, you're consuming more at the same time. I want you guys to know this because this could get very confusing. There's very little information and most of it is based on opinion and word of mouth. There's no written text on this. Now you know how B mode works. Does it harm my car to use B mode? The simple answer is no. Use it as it's intended and it will not harm your car. However, use it as it's not intended. You're counterproductive, you're overworking everything. And that over time, don't go drive a 200 mile trip on B mode unnecessarily. There's no point. It's the same thing with downshifting your transmission. If you're driving at slower speeds, a little bit higher RPMs, you're not gonna hurt it, but it's unnecessary. So utilize B mode only for its intended purpose. You're going down a hill, don't be on the brakes because eventually, yes, there is regenerative braking, but you're demanding more brakes from the car. It's gonna, remember, we talked about this in brakes. It's gonna want to apply the hydraulic brakes. Now, some people have asked, wait, but the hydraulic brakes have the help of the regenerative braking, so it's not gonna overheat. Yes, it will eventually. Going down a hill, again, laws of physics. Eventually, it's gonna use the brakes, use the hydraulic brakes, use them, use them until they're overheated and now we have no brakes. So that's what the B mode is. Use it for its intended purpose and you cannot harm the car, but use it for its, not for its intended purposes, for the misconception of, oh, I'm gonna charge my car. Remember, that engine is not running. It's actually dragging on the, hydro, on the hybrid system. It's not, it's counterproductive. It doesn't work this way. Otherwise, they would have been all over the place. They would have told you, use that to charge your battery so you can even have more range and more gas mileage and better. I mean, it's, that's not the case. There is limitations of laws of physics that completely apply here. Let's talk briefly about the all-wheel drive system. And with this, we're gonna add more parts to the list of parts that hybrids don't have. We talked about there's no alternator, there's no starter. Now we're gonna add one more guy. There's no drive shaft, propeller shaft. The one that goes typically for an, in a conventional all-wheel drive car, goes from the transfer case all the way to the back. Oh, by the way, transfer case, what is that? We don't have that in hybrids. There is no such thing as a transfer case in hybrids. So the transmission in a two-wheel drive Prius, not Prius, but well, actually Prius, we do have all-wheel drive Prius now. The transmission in all-wheel drive Prius is the same in a non-all-wheel drive Prius. Same thing with the Highlander, same thing, because there's nothing different. There is a difference, however, in the inverter. Now, how does the all-wheel drive work? Here's how it works. We talked about MG1 and MG2, the hero MG2. There is also, in the back, a little differential, just like a normal gasoline car, connected to another electric motor. This electric motor in the back is called MGR, MG rear, motor generator rear. And remember, motor generator, we're gonna talk about this in a second. That's all there is. There's no drive shaft, there's no transfer case, so basically there's a differential with a motor connected to it, two axles that go to the wheels, there you go. Another, an additional actually wire, power wire, this is gonna be a three wire, because remember it's also a three phase AC motor, just like MG1, MG2 that we talked about. Now these wires are gonna run all the way from the front of the car, from the inverter, all the way to the differential. And then guess what the inverter is gonna do? 
when it needs all-wheel drive, it's gonna give it power, take power from it, and, and kind of balance it. So now you have a balanced four-wheel drive. It has infinite control over that because there's no mechanical connection. It could blast it with power and now you have a higher ratio in the back or it could give it very little power. Now you have very little drive in the back. Beautiful thing, isn't it? There's one more thing that's even more beautiful. You remember MGR, motor which drives, generator that generates. So all wheel drive hybrids, when you press the brake, not only does MG2, which is in the front, generate, MGR also generates. So it gives them even that much more of a regenerative braking boost. Pretty cool. This is just, when you look at a hybrid all-wheel drive underneath, it is just amazing how it looks because it, you can't tell it's all-wheel drive until you make it by the rear, between the rear wheels and you see that huge MGR unit. Now, I will briefly talk about its maintenance it does not have differential fluid. This has been a mistake that we've seen. It takes, for most cases, ATF WS, just like the transmission, and just like the transmission, you drain it, close it, fill it up until it overflows from the fill plug, and we're done. It's a splash system. There is not much to it other than that. Again, simple, but very complicated. But this one is actually rather simple because it's just a very complicated motor and a somewhat complicated differential and they work in harmony and is great. So that's actually two more parts that hybrids don't have. There's no drive shaft, so you don't have to worry about U-joints lubricating that shaft, that shaft bending from accidents and problems. And then the hugely problematic transfer cases when you put mismatched tires and now they don't, now it jams and it makes noise and bearings go bad and oil leaks and all this mess, all this mess doesn't exist. So in hybrids, basically, all wheel drive, I still recommend you follow the rules of all wheel drives, put similar tires front and back. However, they're a lot more forgiving because of their split. The front wheels are not mechanically connected to the rear wheels. Now the hybrid computer assumes that everything is right and it's trying to equal out the power, assuming that everything is right, but there's no mechanical physical connection where things, where things could bind and break. That doesn't exist in hybrids. That's another added benefit. So there you have it, guys. Now you know what B mode means, how, how it works, and when to use it and when not to use it. And all the misconceptions that you read around the internet. Also, you know how the all-wheel drive system works on these hybrids. Isn't it an amazing design? I really like all-wheel drives on hybrids because they really work. I hope this video was helpful and informative for you. I hope you learned something new. If you like this video, consider subscribing to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, leave a comment down below if you have any questions. May the Lord bless you and keep you, and you have a wonderful day.